All right, so this morning we are going to talk about the next method, but it doesn't mean to say that the previous method is weaker than the one that we are going to learn for today. So let me just, uh, how will I do this? So that it will not be to be share screen, there we go, start. All right, uh, so last meeting we talked about the history of how this uh, language teaching begins and then we go to the first one, the GDM and the reading approach. So now we are going to continue with it, early and mid 20th century approach to the ELP, okay? So now we are going to discuss about the reading approach. But as I tell you again, that um, the previous, two previous one doesn't mean to say it is bad, yeah? But as I said, that it is like a pendulum. Pendulum, it swings, sometimes it's up and then it is down. So of course, there are some weaknesses found by this, uh, oh, sorry by the, the other researcher that we need to improve. We need to improve our uh, theory. And I'm gonna give you something. Yeah, what is that called? It's a reading approach because we need the students to comprehend or to be able to know what they are being reading. So what is reading approach? Okay, what is, what is it? Somebody please read for me. Uh, we'll start with Beatrix. Could you please read for me what is there, Beatrix? Reading approach. The approach is mostly for people who do not travel abroad, for whom reading is the is the one usable skills skill in a foreign language. The priority in studying the target language is first reading ability and second current and or historical knowledge of the country where the target language is spoken. Only the grammar necessary for reading comprehension and fluency is taught. Minimal attention is paid to pronunciation or gaining conversational skills in the target language. All right. So uh, they said, why do we have to learn that a direct method? We are not going to travel anyway. And before it was not as easy as now, yeah probably before they don't have an airplane yet, or maybe they have an airplane, but they only uh, fly to certain countries, yeah? It's not like nowadays from Indonesia, you can just travel anywhere around the world. It would be easy. So the teachers say, why do we have to use that DM, direct method? And it, it requires so many things that we need a native speakers to be with us. Well, we need only for this one, we don't want to travel. Okay, but we need to know what's going on around. So here, uh, this is the method for people who do not travel abroad. Okay, so this is the reading approach and the priority is only for studying the target language. We read and we will be able to know, oh yeah, this is how to study other language or second uh, language. And we know the historical, a country where the language is spoken and then we learn only about the grammar okay only the important grammar uh, that is being taught by the teacher in order for the comprehension take place in the reading process and of course there's not much attention given to the pronunciation as in the direct method so it's a very minimal a uh, pronunciation to the target language. Why? Because the target is reading. Okay, as long as the student read it, okay, that's fine. Comprehensions take place. Continue, Crystal. So this is the feature in the classroom. Yeah, what does it look like, Crystal? Okay. From the beginning, a great amount of reading is done in L two. Yeah, L2 is second language. Oh, second language. Uh -huh. All right. The vocabulary of the early living passages and text is strictly controlled for difficulty. 
vocabulary is expanded as quickly as possible since the acquisition of vocabulary is considered more important than grammatical that grammatical than grammatical skill and then translation reappears in this approach as a respectable classroom procedure related to comprehension of the written text all right so here you can see you can imagine that in the classroom at the beginning yeah pada awalnya mulainya bacaan sudah dilakukan dalam LK bahasa kedua langsung pokoknya membaca dan membaca okay and then the vocabulary is strictly control, control yeah for difficulty so then the teacher is going before the teacher is going to give the um the reading passage and of course the teacher is going to take a look at the difficult one the difficult words and it's going to be um uh, it's going to be given to the student what they meant about it and then of course because they are focusing on the comprehensions of the text vocabulary is expanded very quickly yeah uh, why because uh, if they do not understand the vocabulary there, then they may not able to get the meaning. So it is very, uh, uh, the vocabulary is being expanded very quickly. And then here, as you can see, the translation reappears. In the direct method, no translations is uh, permitted in the classroom. It is prohibited in the classroom, yeah? So there is always the target language, but here in the reading approach that you are uh, going to use um, a second language, yeah, or the native language in the classroom, because uh, the aim is for uh, comprehension. All right, so now uh, what are other features? What do, What is the feature of this? Um, reading approach beside what Crystal has read to us. Um, Tania, could you please read? The reading approach. Um, teach only the grammar needed for reading. The second, control vocabulary in initially, then expand. The third, translation is once more respectable. Mm -hmm. The word only reading comprehension is emphasized, mm -hmm. and the last is results. Learners can read but not speak or understand L2. Yeah. All right. It says here only if you're going to teach the grammar that is needed only for your reading. So it means to say if the passage is given and the future tense is there, then it's the time for the teacher to teach only future tense or vice versa. If you have only the past tense, because what you're going to read was already in the past and the teacher is going to concentrate on the past tense or grammar, yeah? And as you know, the, the vocabulary is really controlled and expand because the vocabulary are based only on the readings, okay? Or on the topics on the topics of that uh, reading passage and yeah i was read about just now that translation is more respectable there it is this me a translation it will be hard guy from the target language to the native language because the main focus for the teacher is comprehension you read and you understand what you've been reading yeah only reading comprehension is emphasized but then the product what is the product the student wouldn't be able to speak the language but then they can understand so it's a vice reverse side with the direct method yeah direct method the target is only for speaking and then there's no uh, uh permit they do not permit the l to inside the classroom so you see you can see that the role of the native language in the GDM, it was highly respected. In the DM, it is not going back to the reading approach. It is respectable to have a, a grammar translation there. And because of that, then they're going to 
the the linguists yeah or the teachers english teacher we said oh no i think we need to find another way another way of teaching so you know the student can speak the language not only understand what is inside uh, and that's it so another method came up with is called the audiolingual method and i think this was what crystal was asking before right crystal man i would like to know about the audiolingual method but then i said later on we have time to learn about this audiolingual method uh -huh. yeah. so we are going to learn about this other lingual method and this method is based on the principle of behavior psychology they take a look at it oh how can the children how can people learn the language hmm, from the psychological side they based on the behavior psychology and it is adapt it adapted many of the principles and procedures of the direct method in part as a reaction to the lack of speaking skills of the reading approach. And so new material is being presented. Yeah. So they said, oh, no, we are not going to use this uh, reading approach because the student wouldn't be able to, to read. But we are not going to use also the direct method. Okay. Uh, but then we are going to get, get this direct method and we we are going to remarry them and we come up with the audiolingual method based on the behavioral uh, psych behavior psychology. Why? Because they can see that, you know, when uh, we keep on repeating things, then they're going to pick it up just like a baby. When the baby cries, ah, ah, and the mother will come, milk, milk, apple susu, susu, and the baby is going to listen. Mm. Ah, again. And the mommy will come, milk, 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 okay, mommy, we're going to give you milk. And then, of course, the child, whenever, uh, one day when the baby's hungry, then say, milk, 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 okay, then the mother will, see, behavior sexual, it is being replayed then. So they said that we're going to get also this direct method, okay? So uh, based on the principle that language learning is a habit formation, the method fosters dependence on, this is the audiolingual method, okay? The feature of it, it becomes a mimicry, memorization of set phrases and overlearning. Uh, and overlearning structures are sequenced and taught one at a time. This is a mimicry, okay? You mimic. The baby, the baby mimic. Okay, see so the mimic of the mother when it comes and say milk, milk. The baby is going to listen to it and the baby is going to memorize. Oh, milk, milk, mama, mama. But the difference here is when you're going to use this audio lingua, a mimicry is present there and memorization of set phrases jadi satu frase ya one phrase that is going to be memorized okay and then of course here you will see the structures are sequence ya jadi pemahaman mulai belajar grammarnya itu from simple to the complex so you do not go to complex then simple now. structure are sequence and thought one at a time and and here you can see here that structures, patterns are taught using repetitive drills. Jadi dia pakai drills ya, diulang dan diulang dan diulang. That is about in uh, audio lingo. And then little or no grammatical explanations are provided. So grammar here is taught inductively. So it's a very different one ya, yeah, from the other method that is deductive. So uh, when we go, to, when we learn this uh, methodology in TEFL, teaching English as a foreign language or teaching English as a second language, okay, you can see there that method of teaching grammar, sometimes they use inductive method or the deductive method. 
Okay, um, I remember about these memorizations of sad uh, phrases, yeah. So I remember uh, when I was small, it was an audiolingual approach, I think, in the school taught by the teacher and the teacher said like this, we have to memorize. What is your name? Nanti jawabannya apa? My name is, and then we are going to fill in the blank, right? I'm gonna ask, uh, then I will say, what is your name? My name is Lina. Then I'm gonna ask, uh, siapa ini? Rima. What is your name? My name is Rima. Rima, tanya sama Tania. Tanya Rima, yang seperti yang tanya ke Rima. Like what I asked you. What is your name? Tania jawab. My name is Tania. Okay, now Tania ask uh, Crystal. Uh, what is your name? Mana Crystal? Yes, me. My yeah. name is Crystal Putra Simanjuntak. Oh, complete one is given. Crystal, why don't you ask Jessica? Jessica, hey. what is your name? <laughs> Do not ask Jessica. <laughs> what? Just say, what's your name? What's your name? My name is Jessica Sanung Kalit. All right. So we have Simanjuntak Simanung Kalit, yeah? SS. Anyway, those are the product of audiolingual approach, yeah? So structure our sequence. Not the teacher is going to control. Sekarang kita pakainya apa? Present tense kah? Atau past tense atau future? Itu dikontrol, ya. Jadi di sini grammar-nya very little. Now let's go and continue and see what is this uh, audiolingual about, yeah? Um, Hanu, could you please read for us? Skill are sequence, learning, speaking, reading, uh, and writing are developed in order. Vocabulary is strictly limited and learning in context. Teaching points are determined by constructive analysis between uh, L1 and L2. There is abundant use of language laboratory, laboratory, laboratories and laboratories and visual aids. There is an expected pre-reading ended pre-reading period on the beginning of the course. All right, thank you, Hano. Now here, take a look at the skill. The four skills yeah, are being sequenced. It started with the listening, listening to, then speaking, then reading, and writing. They are developed in order, yeah. Jadi dia berkembang sesuai skills-nya. First thing is listen. That is from the behavioral psychology tadi kan. The baby listen first. Ah, and then second the baby speak. Remember I told you that, right? In the first meeting, how the babies learn about the language. Then they read. Mommy, that's Kentucky, yeah? Kentucky. I was wondering how can this one or two years old boy say Kentucky because of this apa uh, the old man there yeah <laughs> Kentucky fried chicken dia langsung tahu oh, ini Kentucky yeah okay and then later on started to write yeah so that is the feature of audiolingual method okay uh, teaching points are determined by contrastive analysis between L1 and L2 L1 is the first language. Uh, L2 is the second language. So we will say, like, for example, us, I'm going to talk to you regarding the grammar. In Indonesia, we have only three forms, yeah, of grammar. That's very simple. Kemarin, terus apa lagi? Kemarin, yang pas, terus apa? Indonesia. Sekarang. Sekarang, terus apa? Besok. Besok. Tiga itu aja gampang kan? It's very simple. Everything that was done in the past, ya udah kemarin. 
kemarin, when you talk about kemarin, a signal word for kemarin, it is past. Coba bahasa Inggrisnya past. Bahasa Inggrisnya banyak banget. There's so many ya, for past in the English. The past continuous, past perfect, past bro, past future, tense, and etc. But for us, kita cukup satu ya. Kemarin, sekarang, dan besok. Future. That's it. Very simple. So then the teacher is going to uh, do a contrastive analysis between L1 and L2. Oh, and here, abandoned language of laboratory. Jadi kebanyakan masuk lab. Okay, we put the student in the lab, not, not the teacher is going to say it out. You've listened to this conversation, and of course, the student is going to pick it up. But it's not as strict as the DM, direct math class, yeah, where we have the teacher should be, you know, a native like speakers. Here, the teacher could be an Indonesian, okay, or um, native, whatever, uh, whatever uh, country it is. If you are a Thai, then a Thai teacher or a Japanese teacher or a Korean teacher could be the, the teachers. But then they can use a lot of laboratories, put them, put the student inside the laboratory, English lab. Now we have that in our campus, English lab. Yeah. But now since we have it online and it is just easy for you to find your lab. Yeah, there are so many. Uh, just listen to the YouTube and you will listen to different kinds of pronunciations over there. You can make use of those. And then uh, extend that pre-reading period at the beginning of the course. And for the course, yeah, they still use the reading approach. But this one, you have the pre-reading, the reading, and the post-reading. They have it more, okay, extensions in the pre-reading uh, so that the student can be able to understand well what, what they are going to read. And then... Uh, what else do we know about this uh, other lingual method? Hunter, are you there? Hannah Teresia? Yes, ma'am. Okay, could you please read for us? The first great importance is given to first precise, precise, native precise. like precise native like pronunciation. Mm -hmm. The second use of the mother tongue by the teacher is permitted by discouraged among and by the students. The third, successful responses are reinforced. Great care is taken to prevent learner errors. And the last is there is a tendency to focus on manipulation of the target language and to disregard content and meaning. All right. So, uh, Hannah ha has read that to us. Okay, there is, yeah, the teacher said, okay, it would be possible that your pronunciation should be a native life. That's why students are put more in the laboratory so that the students can listen to the kinds of pronunciations by the native. Here, but the use of mother tongue is permitted, yeah? is permitted but discouraged among by the students. So me as a teacher, I'm going to permit if Crystal or Grace or Jessica is going to speak in Bahasa Indonesia, but then I'm going to discourage. Do your best to speak in English. But the teacher can uh, switch that to Bahasa Indonesia when the teacher sees that the students kind of like to not understand. And here, successful respo re responses are reinforced, yeah? Great care is taken to prevent learner errors. Trying hard for that. And so, uh, what are the hints then for using other lingos drills in the classroom? We can see that here in this uh, diagram. Michelle, could you please read? Uh, hints for using audiolingual drill, drills in L2 teaching. First, 
the teacher must be careful to ensure that all of the uterines which students will make are actually within the practice patterns. Two drills should be conducted as rapidly and possibly so as to ensure automatic automaticity and to establish a system. Third, ignore all but gross errors of pronunciation when drilling for grammar practice. Uh, four, use of shortcuts to keep the pace of drills at a maximum. Use hand motion, signal cards, notes, etc. to cue response. All right. Thank you, Michelle. So you see here, uh, the first one, number one, teacher must be careful to ensure that all utterances, okay, all utterances, semua jawaban, apa yang dikatakan oleh students, okay, are actually within the practice pattern. So just now that I gave you example, yeah, I make sure that all the students are using the pattern that I gave. Yang tadi patternnya apa? What is your name? My name is the is is it it's a pattern and i'm going to see as a teacher the so one student will use that pattern to the other students and it will go around the classroom yeah it's a teacher yeah makes your utterance remember that it was a very good example i was saying the one is going to respond is to seek up the pen christo said jessica <laughs> okay what's your name remember that i said just now when christo said that and i said oh you just use the pattern Okay, uh, uh, you can see here, the drill should be conducted as rapidly as possible. So first, uh, when I have that drill from Rima, from me to Rima, well, it was not that fast. Kan? Then from Rima to Tania, and Tania to Cristo, Cristo to siapa tadi? Jessica. Yeah? Akhirnya lebih cepat. Yeah? So uh, it should be conducted as rapidly, especially when you have a lot of students inside the classroom. First, they're going to listen and then going to stick it out. Okay, such a part, yeah. Those are the drills that is given. And of course, remember as a teacher, you are going to ignore gross errors of pronunciations. Okay, ignore, yeah, ignore all but gross errors. Jadi kita bisa, if it's a minor, if, if it's a minor uh, pronunciation, you can just ignore, but not the gross one. Yang benar-benar parah, kita harus langsung apa? Change. Kita harus langsung koreksi. Okay. And then here, uh, you're going to use your hands or motion or signal cards or notes to uh, respond to the students. So here, you minimize. You minimize the using of L1, but of course it is permitted in the classroom. Yeah, so you have uh, the idea now of using audio lingo in the classroom. Natasha, could you please read? Number five, drill material should always be meaningful. If the content words are not known, teach the meanings. Mm -hmm. Next interprets short periods of drill about 10 minutes with every brief alternative activities to avoid fatigue and boredom. Last, don't stand in one place. Move about the room standing next to as many different students as possible to check their pr production. Thus, you will know who to give more practice to during individual drilling. Okay, thank you, Natasha. So here, when you are going to give those phrases, jadi frase yang akan dihafal oleh student should be meaningful. Harus ada uh, artinya ya, supaya mereka bisa dapat gunakan nantinya. And the uh, contents of words are not known. Yeah, uh, contents of words which are not known to the student, you're going to teach the meaning. Kalau kita ajar satu frase terus student yang nggak ngerti kita kasih artinya ya and make sure that short periods of drill ya 10 minutes or otherwise more than that then the student is going to be boring or fatigued so if you want like a one phrase 
for the students to memorize. You're going to give it in 10 minutes. And after that, you're going to switch with another activity so that they will not be bored or fatigued with that activity. And then later on, you can return back if you have more students in your class. So that's why for the English uh, classroom, most, the most maximum is 20 for effective. But in, but in Indonesia, we have like 40, 50 inside the classroom. That's why we are more on passive learner. Yeah, that's what's happening in the public schools or even in some of our schools. Yeah, then uh, as a teacher, do not just stand in one place, just in front, but you move around. So you have these phrases, uh, you give that. Later on, we, I'm going to show you the video of how we are going to do this audio lingo inside the classroom so that you will have an idea when you will be teaching and uh, you can adapt this uh, audio lingo method. So teacher will not have to stay only in one point in the classroom, but have to move around. You go from the sides to the middle, to the back, from the back to the front, and listen to your students as they are communicating with their students and that the teacher is going to see that, uh-oh, these are my weak students. I'm going to give more drills there or the teachers uh, will uh, pay more attention to the improvement of that student. So remember, yeah, not only on one point. Walk around the classroom. I used to do that in my class there at the academic building, yeah. Have to move around when they are having practice or when they are discussing so that you can hear what they uh, talk about that. All right, so now there is a slight difference with it. Uh, the US, of course, these are two, these are another uh, powerful country, yeah, who uses uh, English as a native language, so from the UK and from the US. Now, this is the um, feature of the audiolingualism, which is used in the US, yeah? If we take a look at that, it almost looks the same as I can say. So here begins lessons with a dialogue, yeah. Just now we learned uh, a kind of different, you begin it also with a conversation, yeah, Sama, I just see. Uh, there's a uh, lessons begin with a dialogue and then the same here, mimicry and memorization are used to reflect the language learning with the habit formation. Same, because they use the audio lingo. Grammar is sequence or rules taught indirectly. The same, right? In the US and UK, skills are sequence. It started from the listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And then you have the accurate pronunciation is being emphasized early. And then after that, uh, the vocabulary is very limited. Effort is made to prevent error and language is manipulated with minimal attention to make meaning or context. So here in the last part, they manipulated the language. For example, I went to the market yesterday, Rima Church. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you listen to my you listen to my sentence. I went to the market yesterday. Rima Church. I went to the church yesterday. Good, Natasha. Court. I went to the court yesterday. Very good. April is April there? No, still absent. Desti. Supermarket. Yeah. Probably Desti was not listening just now, or maybe the connection is bad with you. So this is how to check students, yeah, whether they are listening or not. Crystal, make your choice. What? Wait, how do you only listen? No, 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 no. What? <laughs> Also means to say you are not in a focus. Jessica? I went to the supermarket yesterday. Make your choice. Huh? You substitute with any that supermarket dengan apa? Hmm. School, school. Classroom. 
academic building or cafeteria. Michelle, we can replace the last word. Uh, I went to the. I went to hospital yesterday. All right, very good. See, so I can tell that Michelle is listening. Although we have fast, I have called several names. I can tell who is not listening, or maybe double gadget. Yeah, yang satu dengarkan yang lain, tapi gadgetnya dinyalakan sama kelas level. So you see that class is a very simple to check students whether they pay attention or not in this online class. Now, those are the things that you're going to do in the audio lingua. Intan, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you make your choice? Places? Uh, I, have to go, I have to go to the restroom. All right. She's making it into the present tense. Yang mem tadi bikin apa? Past tense. When? Yes, ma'am. All right. I have to go to the restroom. She made it into the present tense. Okay, Lista. Make it into the past tense. Is Lista there? Yes, ma'am. Or Kathleen. Okay, Lista. Bentuk yang lampau, Lista. Pergi kemana kemarin? Uh, I went to the uh, photocopy yesterday. <laughs> okay, photocopy center <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> All right. Okay, so those are the kinds. Yeah, the teacher is going to limit it. Very good. Yeah, tapi bagus juga tadi si siapa Intan kasih contoh ya. Intan kasih contoh. I have to go to the restroom. Nah, kembali kan. Nah, ini sekarang teacher audio lingual. Teacher audio lingual lagi ngajar mengenai bentuk past tense. Jadi dia akan arahkan lagi kembali ya. Arahkan lagi studentnya kembali ke bentuk past tense. Lihat yang membuat Lisda. Jadi Lisda balik lagi dia Mickey I went to the photo coffee center yesterday. Itu lah si uh, audio lingual. Now. Itu di US mereka bilangnya audio lingual. Tetapi kalau di UK mereka nggak mau dong sama. Kamu <laughs> sama ya dengan si ya, Amerika. Jadi they call it apa? oral situational approach. Now let's see what is the difference. Actually it is just about the same but they make it a different oral situational approach by situation. UK, uh, America, they call US, they say it's um, audio lingua. Smirna, are you there? Please read. Yes, ma'am. For our situational approach, uh, UK. Spoken language is primary. Uh, is La language itu ya, ma'am, bikin pendek. Oh. <laughs> Language itu. Language is practiced orally before any reading or writing occurs. Only the target should be used. The most useful and general vocabulary is taught. Grammar is sequences simply to complex. New vocabulary and grammar are introduced and practiced in situation, post office, bank, dinner table, etc. All right. So here from the UK, they made it situational. So then uh, it will be more meaningful for the students. Actually, US also, they make it situational, but of course they call it as audio uh, audiolingual approach. But then uh, UK, they are more uh, specific to the situational approach, yeah? If you take a look at their principle, it's about the same. Language is, uh, spoken language is primary, yeah? So it's not reading. It's a spoken language is primary. It is practiced orally before any reading or writing, of course. So you're going to practice. Sama saja ya tadi dialogue kalau si Amerika punya ya dialogue ya. Presentasi di, di awalnya pakai dialogue. Kalau di ini dia bilang sama aja sebenarnya. And then the next one, only target language should be used. Dia UK ya, only target language. Tapi kalau di audio lingo tadi US punya permitted ya, bisa pakai. Uh, apa native L1-nya. Kalau ini 
via only target language yan UK po niya. And the most useful general vocabulary is thought. Grammar is sequence, yeah, simple to complex. Sama, mirip. And new vocabulary and grammar are introduced in practice like situation. Okay, situation. Tadi, mem, uh, prakteknya tadi mem bilang apa? I went to the store yesterday. Kemudian kalian gantikan. I went to the church, to the court, yeah. Now, ini dia, itu kita asal aja ya, kita ngacak ngambilnya. But then, now here in the UK, Uh, they're strict to situation. Huh? Jadi, if you're talking about the situation, situation at the post office. Jadi, semuanya, the conversation is going to involve in the post office. Situasinya di kantor pos. Or at the bank. Or dinner table. Pada saat makan malam, itu situasinya. So, all the conversation that is going to be taught to the that is going to be learned by the students are about the dinner table dan etc. Jadi dia per per kondisi ya, per kondisi dan situasi ini sih uh, di UK tapi pada awalnya sih sama. Oke. Okay. So I think we are done with the audio lingual or the audio lingual in the US and um, and what do you call that? In the UK pakai apa? Uh, apa tadi? Oral? Apa tadi? Ayo yang dengar apa? What? Oral situational approach. Oke. Okay. Very good list the Ayu. Ayu yang dengar oral situational approach. Just make sure the principle is about the same. Then after that we are going to have a little bit uh, break before we are going to learn more recent methodology ya. So we are done with the audio lingo. Oh, and later I'm going Uh, after coming back from our uh, break, okay, we're going to have a break for five minutes and then we are going to listen to the audio, the video of how are we going to teach audio lingo inside the classroom because you might be able to use it. You might, ah, udah, I'm interested to use audio lingo. How am I, how am I going to apply that in the classroom? Kalau GTM, gampang kan? direct method you have it but what about the audio lingo the teachers interactions uh, with the students and we will do that after our uh, five minutes break so let's have a break unless you have any questions before we have a short break 